Okay, we're here uh, with Marty Jertsen from Ping. Uh, engineer is going to be talking about the new G25 line, uh, the driver and the iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, G25 driver is uh, super exciting because we've made a lot of, starting with the G2 driver, we've made a lot of improvements to the equivalent of our gas mileage and horsepower, so to speak, which in a driver is the center of gravity and moment of inertia. And so those are the primary drivers, you know, in addition to the face size and the, the face response and getting, getting the right spin and lift characteristics to making improvements to your product year after year. And this year with the G25 driver, we've made uh, our biggest jump in both CG movement, down and back, uh, and uh, that helped drive also uh, the biggest gains we've had from one product generation to the next in terms of moment of inertia. So that's the forgiveness on off-center hits in both the heel-toe axis, which affects miss hits on the heel and toe, and the top-to-bottom axis, which affects miss hits on the bottom of the face and high on the face. Uh, so at the end of the day, what we're able to deliver is a club with that, that delivers, because we're moving the CG down and back, we're delivering more dynamic loft. Okay, so that just means that you can play less static loft, you get the added benefit of, of the high ball speed that you play because you, you don't okay. have to keep going up in static loft to get the right launch conditions. Um, so that's really beneficial. The other thing we've done is we've created another additional gram of discretionary weight through our high balance point shaft technology. So just to kind of uh, to go over that technology again, we're able to lighten the shaft, move the balance point up substantially. It's about two inches higher than, than kind of your average shaft out there. That means that we can make a club with the same static weight, but take mass out of the shaft, put it a little higher in the club and more mass in the head. And that gives us, on average versus kind of an, an average standard shaft out there, we're using a seven or eight gram heavier head, but at the same swing weight. So as a golfer, you don't know the difference. But because you have more mass in the head, you have more momentum into the wall. Um, and so the physics of the energy transfer are a little bit less about the kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. And because momentum is conserved, the physics of the impact is more determined by the momentum. So we're delivering more mass at the same velocity that you would swing with a normal club. So you get more momentum. And having that extra mass helps us also drive up the inertia in both directions as well. So it's very exciting. We've also um, increased the face size a little bit too. To help okay kind of jumping like jumping on a bigger trampoline just to help get more area for the face to bend and respond. Compared with like let's say the I-20 driver, the Anzer driver, where is this in terms of the spin rate? Yeah that's a real good question. Obviously the Anzer driver is is super low spin. Okay. Um, and that fits a certain segment of the market and, and if a player even has problems slicing the ball, reducing backspin also reduces total spin obviously and so that's a really good product for that. Where this, where the G25 driver stands is kind of, compared to the marketplace, I would call it a medium low spinning driver. It's by no means a high spinning driver, mm -hmm. but it's not as low on the spectrum as the answer driver, and it's a little bit more spin than, than the i20. Uh, but it's certainly what we feel like is in the sweet spot from the standpoint as a Bubba Watson can do really good with this driver and still be able to hit the shots that he wants to hit and move the ball that he wants to move. Uh, up to the high handicap golfer uh, that needs a, you know, a little bit higher launch but get the right spin characteristics while maximizing ball speed. So we feel like we have really good product differentiation. The answer is super low spinning, a ton of shaft options. The G25 is, uh, is much our, our highest for forgiveness driver uh, with more of a premium on high launch with medium to low spin, which, which is more in the spin rate category that's going to fit in general, the widest spectrum of golfers out there. So kind of our strategy is if we had to make just one product, if we couldn't have multiple lines, one product that would fit everybody, uh, G25 would be that product. Cool, and then adjustable by half, half degree lofts? Yeah, half degree increments. Uh, again, no instruction manual required. This is used for fine tuning trajectory after you get fit into the right loft. Um, and. Uh, that's, we've, we've executed that in a way that has no negative impact of the other attributes that we're trying to improve with the club. It's small, sleek, light, very efficient from an aerodynamic standpoint. Uh, it's simple, uh, doesn't mess with your confidence as a golfer. You don't have too many settings to be confused about. It's just high, medium, or low after you get fit for one of our four different static loft offerings. We've got the G25 iron here. 
Yeah, G25 iron. Um, so the big, the biggest thing that you know golfers will notice when they first look at this iron in the address position. That's the way pretty much all golfers first look at an iron after you get a kind of view of the back cavity and what's going on there. Is what does it look like in address? We've pared down the the size of the iron substantially in terms of the sole width. So the first thing you'll notice is the sole width is substantially narrower than where we were with the G20, its predecessor. Um, and the reason why we did that is we wanted to realign the size of our of our staple iron, our G-series iron, more in the sweet spot of the game enjoyment category. And over the progression of the G-series family, we had uh, kind of eked out the sole width um, kind of year after year and, and used that to drive some of the improvements to launch conditions. Well, this year we wanted to pair that back, and by but by doing that, we we had to make some substantial improvements into the cavity and the structure design to get the performance back to where the level of the G20 was in terms of forgiveness. But you get the added benefit of more versatility through a little leaner sole. We have a little less offset, especially going into the short irons. So we engineered a little bit of the progressive set technology in. So the long irons again, a little bigger, a little more offset, wider sole, and then we're starting to progress the soles to be a little bit narrower through. The the set and one of the ways that we got the inertia back up to the same level of the G20 while still maintaining that slimmer sole profile is through our new cavity structure design. So our CTP cavity which is our custom tuning port we use to fine tune swing weight. Normally it's a floating CTP so it's a little higher on the face mm -hmm. um, and that adds mass around the perimeter um, that we use to stabilize the face because all golfers regardless of your playing ability care about distance control. Uh, we're all out there to kind of hit our irons further and do that sort of thing. And, by, and absolutely, we're trying to do the same thing, but we want to deliver that distance also with distance control. And so that's why we engineer face stability into our irons. So what we've done on the G25 is move that CTP structure down and encompass half of it down into the sole. That saved about 15 grams of extra mass. While we still have a, a very efficient face stabilization structure there, to, to give the good feel and good distance control. So that extra mass, you can see we freed up to make the back flange thicker and to add a lot of extra mass to the low toe, which is where you want it, to get it real far away from the center of gravity. So you have mass in the hosel, mass in the low toe, drive boosts up your, your inertia to make the iron more forgiving. So we've engineered uh, the distances, a little better distance gaps than the G20, and we've delivered all that with really good feel, and golfers are gonna see a little bit more versatility because a little less offset and, and a little thinner sole than its predecessor. Is the is a finish a little different from some previous models? Yeah, so we've also we've we've also kind of engineered a new finish that's a little bit darker. And so when you when you look at it, it's, it's still a bead blasted finish, not a plated finish. Um, so like all of the G series predecessors, it just wears nicely over time. It's a blasted finish. Um, it's going to wear very nicely. But the darker finish also does when you set it down makes the iron appear you know a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker. So it's kind of good from a couple standpoints. One, the appearance helps the appearance look a little bit smaller than the iron is uh, and it just wears very nicely over time. Great. Thank you, Marty. All right. Thanks, Mike.